Hi, welcome back. It is still the run-up, and we're starting off with the PDP. The crisis within the People's Democratic Party has continued to, you know, deteriorate, uh, with the G5 governors of the party declaring to support a southern candidate for the 2023 presidential election in Nigeria. Uh, the two major contenders in the election who are from the South are Bola Tinubu of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, and Pita Albi of the Labour Party. The stance of the G5 has complicated the challenges faced by the PDP presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, who has been struggling to bring back the party fold, you know. At the breakaway group, which is led by the defeated PDP presidential aspirant, Nye Sumwike, who is also the governor of River State, uh, the, G the other G5 members are Governor Samuel Otom of Benue State, Ifan Yugwanyi of Enugu State, Sheima Kinde of Oyo, and Okezie Ibazo of Abia State. And, uh, the odds are stacked against the PDP and the, at the highest level. And the presidential elections are staggering from uh, its loftiest place as the ruling party in Nigeria's return to democracy and 16 years of unbroken domination of the party mm. politics at the center of power. There was a time when party stalwarts uh, regaled themselves with stories of how they were too big to be beaten and how they were going to be in power in Nigeria for 60 years at least. Today we'll be discussing the scrabble for ongoing, or the, the, the war, ongoing <laughs> war between the G5 and the presidential candidate of the PDP and the possible effect it will have on the coming presidential election. And joining us to discuss this is uh, Charlie Agbo, a lawyer and a PDP chieftain. Hello and welcome to the program, Agbo. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, we had expected that uh, by this time, the problem between the G5 and the presidential, or, or the PDP, let me not even say the presidential candidate, the G5 and the PDP would have been resolved. Why are we taking baby steps up to this moment? Well, um, I would say there is nothing really extraordinary about this. It is the character of politics uh, you are not able to give a timeline to conflict or disagreement, political disagreement. Um, one will expect that this, as, as natural and as ordinary as one would ordinarily think that these um, uh, skirmishes are, um, that all the players will recognize the importance of uh, racing up to be able to contend with the with the project at hand, which is the plodding the, the government of the All People's Congress. I think it's a very important uh, assignment to perform, undercut by the fact that uh, the party is, uh, is, the, is actually the opposing party. That, that being the case, uh, it is, um, it is, uh, 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 there are some advantages ordinarily it, it, it will have if it, it were incumbent, which it does not have currently. And therefore, one will expect that we should be prepared, you know, to be able to deal with the um, massive project at hand. Um, having said that, um, I will actually believe that the, the problems, you know, those chemistries will ultimately come to an end. It is the nature of these things. Uh, both parties are exerting themselves to see who is going to blink first. Uh, on both sides, there are arguments. Uh, the uh, G5, you know, are saying that uh, they expect some balancing, you know, in the position of, I mean, in terms of residency of certain positions, particularly the chairmanship. You know, and so when you look at the chairman is coming from the north, the presidential candidate is coming from the north, and then until the other day, you know, um, the um, chairman of the board of trustees was coming from, you know, also coming from the north until that was rectified, you know, just not, not quite long ago. So you could see there are um, uh, issues that actually are on the table for determination. I would say that uh, it behoves the leadership of the party to be fast enough in understanding, you know, the um, the, the, the importance, you know, of time. Time is extremely of the essence, you know, materially. Now we are looking at an election that will happen barely in the next two and a half months or, or so. I think the time to resolve this conflict is now. You know, um, no matter what the, whatever the underlying factors are, we appreciate the sentiments of you know, the warring in, you know, interests. But I think this is the time to place the interest of the party 
and the larger interest of the country at heart. So I'm going to be uh, admonishing those, you know, directly and uh, indirectly involved, you know, to shift their thoughts so that we can move the party forward. But how, how, would you, how would you describe the role played by the presidential candidate himself? Because, yes, it is a PDP thing. It's a party thing as a whole. But the person who is involved is the leader of the party, the, the chairman of the party. And if he's not ready to relinquish power, the only other person that could have spoken sense to uh, the two warring uh, parties uh, should have been the presidential candidate. And a lot of people have used this to say that if he cannot resolve internal conflict within his party, then resolving uh, internal conflicts or conflicts in a whole polity like Nigeria will be a difficult thing. And that is a minus to him. So how would you rate his level of involvement and his level of uh, uh, his, his strategy in resolving this whole issue? Now, you see, uh, it will be very important that the, the dramatist person there do not fall into uh, some, some kind of you know, mischief of the intermittent, you know, that will be occasioned by, you know, uh, percep misperceptions, if I have to put it that way. It is possible to assume that the reason Wike is pushing forward with the, you know, what he is doing is more like, you know, a kind of a statement. Uh, it is possible to assume that because it's not on the ballot, uh, for him, it as well be, you know, whatever it is, they'll pull it down. And so far as I'm not on the ballot, well, of course, he'll be tantalizingly, you know, uh, possibly in inviting to, to look at that underlying perspective. These are all political things. They, 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 they go with so much, so much of shenanigans. You see, um, but then that would be extremely unpatriotic if that were what is, you know, powering a weak case interest, you know? And I think he's also under a, you know, some, um, some really higher expectation in terms of his obligation to the party in this regard, and particularly, you know, encountering the notion that it's because he lost the election that is not on the ballot that he is, uh, you know, you know, um, by powering on, you know, with the uh, opposition, you know, for the, uh, the exit of IU. So it, I think, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, it's a little bit of a, a very difficult uh, situation. Wherever you have positions that are taken by, you know, those who are part of any conflict, something is there. I'm not going to be saying that the presidential candidate ought not to be shifting his ground. I expect him to be shifting his ground. But the point is that shifting his ground is predicated on, on the, uh, the exit of the And I think, you know, on the, on the diplomatic table, it is important that people understand the importance, you know, of dialectics. There has to be given, give, give and take. You know, uh, so you have to be able to give before you take. So I expect both parties, you know, to be able to find a middle course, to give and to take. Is it possible that it must not be ultimately, you know, that we, that, uh, that are you exit, that this conflict is resolved? If you look at it, uh, the election is just about two months, three months old, I mean, uh, away. Um, if we talk about the larger equity, unless, you know, for basically symbolic purposes, I would, I would say, let just let him stay. The elections are just here. I think he has, he has he's, he's on record to have said that if the elections, you know, that he was, he's going to resign immediately after the, the elections. So in the next two, three months, we expect him to exit. Okay? You see, that is the proposition that we, that we brought to the table. In terms of affording the aspect of dialectics I'm talking about, the give and take that I'm talking about here. Okay? Then uh, on the other side, and one could as well say, what is it so special that you must be there? Uh, if, even if it is that it is anchored on the mischief that uh, Ayo uh, was seen to have been interested, you know, in one or two other candidates, you know, uh, well, whatever it is, there will always be a basis for which there is a conflict. And but then the most important thing is, as far as I am concerned, look, let us look at the larger interest of the people, the larger interest of the party, you know, and so uh, on the basis of which people say, look, are you? Why don't you just throw in the towel? It's not about you. It's not about we. Uh, it is about Nigerians. It's about all of us. It's about the collective interest, you know, of uh, the people of this country. So whichever way. Incidentally, I know that a lot of George, a lot of talking has been going on in this respect. I will expect 
that said we, we should be uh, 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 approaching the time when we time of, of all, you know, all, these, all, all the efforts you know, towards uh, brokering you know, a realistic and manageable truth in this respect. All of those who are concerned should understand that the moment for, it, for this is now. So I'm not going to blame anyone. I don't have all the facts, but I, I make my basic assumptions on the strength of what I assume, you know, on those snipers want to, you know, uh, to, to glean. So in this respect, it's not about whether a person is right or wrong. To the extent that I don't have all the facts, I may not be able to determine who is right or wrong. And in any case, if, if that is useful, that is about just an opinion. So that is as far as this can go. And I, I think it's important that we have to report it at this point. All right. Um, you've mentioned a lot of points, actually. And then one of the things that you said is how that it's about interest. I mean, it's party politics. And of course, people join polit uh, political parties because of ideologies and interest. And uh, you also mentioned how that the, pre the um, candidacy of Atiku Abubakar is like very, uh, you know, causing a lot of chaos. And that is premised on how that Wiki was an aspirant and it didn't work out for him. And people are saying that is why he's being very difficult. But then Wiki has come out to say that he has no problem with anybody's candidacy, that the interest of the South is what he has at heart. And then let's not, let's not hang it on Wiki alone. I mean, there are up to six other governors who are in this G5 who are also expressing the same views as Wiki. So if we want to say it is party politics and you want to look at the greater good of the party and the country at large, why is it looking like it's people from a certain region, you know, that are aggrieved and it's almost as if the party is expecting them to play along because it's party politics, mm. because it is a greater interest. Why haven't we had like a concrete meeting, you know, set out for the purpose of settling this particular issue? Um, his Excellency is supposed to be in Anambra today. I'm sure he would have arrived by, by, by now, uh, Atiku Abubakar. That is the Southeast Nigeria. And up to four governors from the Southeast are among the G5 governors. How do you think this is going to play out? I mean, he's in the East for campaigns and everything, and he's not in good terms, or they are not in good terms. How do you think that is going to play out? Well, of course, that is the character, the, the fallout of, from a uh, political conflict. It is not possible for you to you actually do politics with that conflict. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's the nature of this business, and um, as inconvenient as it may seem, they still find a way to tag along. You see, uh, politics is not exactly, you know, uh, like a, a, a cup of tea. It's, it's quite engaging. Many may assume that because those of who are involved are on the, on the limelight, that uh, it's all rosy. No, a lot of underlying elements in politics though, makes it actually a very, very, very difficult thing to engage in. So um, we, we will recognize that they have that situation to contend with. But they also recognize you know, the importance you know, of the moment. These campaigns are here. Okay, uh, so it is expected that they will be, you know, uh, speaking with one voice, and uh, their body languages will not be discordant, so as not to send wrong signals to the electorate they are intending to woo. Uh -huh. I recognize that fact, but the point I'm making is that it is not always convenient. The issues involved in the power game are not always very convenient things. So inconvenience is part of it. And then they, it, when you uh, confront such circumstances, well, of course, you recognize you know, that there, there is a duty to perform. And that is why all of those who are on the line of duty, those who are supposed to be part of what is going on, are still are, are expected to be there. It is part of the internal conflict that, you know, that, that characterizes you know, the, 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 the politics. It's not a perfect situation, but it goes on. Don't forget, it's about interest. You know, uh, whereas the party has a larger interest of, of, the, of the country at heart, there are internal issues, the dynamics that shape, you know, the the, the, uh, the configuration of you know of, 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 of tendencies in the party, because it's a human, it's a human factor. You know, it's a conflict between interests. 
you know, uh, so several individuals to, will have to profit out to be able to harmonize to children at a position that they can present ultimately. So you will have all these difficulties. But all I'm trying to say is that there is nothing unusual about that at all. There isn't a thing that we, we haven't happened, you know, under the configuration or the coloration of politics. You know, this is the, the character of this business, you know, all over. But I want it, I know. Uh, you will not be surprised to find out that all of this will still end, you know, in a harmonized position in the fullness of time. It is the nature of politics. I don't see anything extraordinary about it. But I, my, my, I bother about time. You know, for whatever reason, it is time to really begin to put, a, you know, I mean, to harmonize their chisel at the position that will present a common friend from so that we don't have conflicting signals. You know, we don't confuse the message. It is important that Nigerians understand that the party is coming as one united, you know, organization, as one united family, you know, and not to allow, you know, a spillover of its own internal conflicts, you know, to affect its capacity to govern when ultimately it wins power. You know, do you, do you understand? So in that context, I am expecting that ultimately this matter will be resolved. Those dramas you witness are parts of conflict. Yes. And they come in various forms. And it's not a Nigerian phenomenon. And it's not a PDP phenomenon. It is the phenomenon or the character of politics the world over. So it ultimately will come to an end. But my own position is that the moment to, for it to come to an end is now. How, 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 you know, the question is, how does the party intend to bring it to an end? The G5, some time ago, I think it was sometime in October, they had a meeting, and part of what they were saying is how that they are not going to be intimidated. And that has been a very tiny but important part of the conversations they've been having. Uh, how that, first of all, this... 2023 elections, presidential elections, were supposed to go to the south. And how that the PDP, in all their wisdom, thought that it was okay to hand it over to the north, you know, to vie for the seat. And then it, it, the, the, the G5 governors, being from the south, feeling like the party, because they think, um, you know, they have all it takes, all, all, all it takes to a point or to, you know, support who they want for the seat of the presidency, that the G5 probably being a minute part of the party is supposed to string along and play along. And that, that, that you know, fuels the part of the conversation that leads it towards intimidation. Do you think this is what it is? And then you mentioned the time factor. This conversation has lingered and all of a sudden, the presidential candidate has sought it worthy to finally come to the southeast. Uh, uh, do you think that there is, you know, a political will, if I'm to use that word, mm. or do you think that this coming to the east is actually to bring this to an end, or is it also another, um, you know, ploy to coerce the G5 governors to also play along, uh, as we've seen so far? No, I, I, don't, I don't really think uh, that he is, he is trying to coerce the G5 government. No, it's not about coercion. You see, this thing is, 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 um, is predicated on a couple of positions that may be a little difficult depending on the tide of the, you know, the, or, 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 or the, uh, on uh, the tide of, from which, which, in which you are. You see, um, the, the, there, there was the permutation. And there is still that permutation, you know, that is supposed to be anchored on real politics. You know, that, uh, that the, the winning perspective, as far as the election is concerned, at the material time, is going to be the norm. If you remember, there was a, you know, there was there were some delays uh, between the two parties, you know, in play, playing this game, in what, you know, determining, allowing the, uh, the other to take a position first, you know, before the, the you know, the, uh, you know uh, the party decides to take on you know, and stuff like that between the two parties, the contending political parties. You see, I, I don't think it's about coercion. The, the G5 governors are talking about equity, and, and, and that position is clear. The references I made, in, you know, to to weaken is only to the extent that that I, I expect that he recognizes that some some individuals 
they'll be saying that it just because it's not on the ballot, but as far as this is concerned, you could as well throw the baby away with bathwater, you have, you know, and stuff like that. I was like trying to, to get him to understand he, he has a, a higher take. Because if it were that he, he was not the candidate, you know, uh, I mean, uh, an, an aspirant, uh, okay, he would have been, they had a better a leeway to be able to take any position he takes. But then he's constrained by these circumstances, by this possibility of misperception, you know, in terms of his full intention, you know, to, to he's constrained actually to, 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 to take, the, to, to, you know, to, to, to go the extra mile in trying to, you know, uh, get the matter resolved. It should be more like, look, I recognize the fact that I was a, an aspirant, but I have a larger uh, interest. I'm, a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm propagating the interest of the South, or not just in terms of the Southeast or the South. I'm propagating, you know, equity as an underlying factor, as a, as a pillar. You know, equity as a pillar, you know, of justice and equity, equity as a foundation of politics. Do you understand? Now, so it is important that he recognizes that there are, he has more, more on his shoulders, you know, than others who did not contest. And therefore, he should be seen to be more interested in finding ways around this problem. It is that in that context that I make those references. But I also recognize the fact that independent of that, and I will wish that we are not part of his own reasoning, they have a right you know, to, 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 to be bothered about the fact that for so many years, that you know, the residency of, residency of power you know, is moving from point A to the same point. And it is ordinarily expected that you know, at the average individual will expect that power will have to shift to the, to the south. There isn't a doubt about it. As a matter of fact, it's part of the PDP constitution. You know? The issue is the extent to which these very stiff positions, you know, can linger without a resolution. But as far as I am concerned, I'm definite about the fact that those people who are, are propagating the Southern presidency are standing on the, on, the, on the part of equity, are standing on the part of justice, and they have a right to their point of view. So when you talk about uh, I'm twisting, you know, that I wouldn't say that people will try a thing like that to go to... To, 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 to go to, to Anambra to, to um, twist anybody. I wouldn't think about that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that is the position at all. And in an old war horse, he has been around for so long. And therefore, I expect that that element will rub off on the way that he goes about you know, resolving this problem. Do you understand? So, um, I, 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 I stand on the positive side. Mm. You know, and I'm also standing on the side of history. I'm standing on the side of political history or the politics or the history of politics. And I am definite that just like every other conflict that we have had in the formation or in nominations, you know, or in, even in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in conflict generally, you know, involving, you know, sharing of positions and all that, we will eventually, since they have all been resolved in the past, this will also invariably follow the same pattern. And at the end of the day, a lot of people would actually be wondering why they got involved. Because it will be more like, is this how this voting ultimately ends? Yeah, but many have not learned their lessons. And that's why they get too quick in holding on to this position. But if you are amazed at the end of the day, how this matter will be resolved. Well, uh, it's not really looking good for the PDP, whatever is happening right now. Because, okay, yes, granted, Wiki was on the ballot and he lost. It's like you uh, getting a maid for your house. He can, she can never become the madame or the landlord or whatever it is. But you don't disgrace a maid out of your house without pay and all that if that maid knows your dirty secrets, as it were. Because those secrets will come out. They will be spilled somewhere. It's, that's what I'm seeing Wiki to be. And the fact that the, the PDP doesn't seem to be playing nice they seem to be uh, just letting things go. Mm -hmm. Speaks to some kind of arrogance, which as a lot of people have described the PDP, especially in the past, when they were boasting uh, that they are going to rule this country for over 60 years and more. Like nothing they happen, like we say it in, in Nigeria. But you see, these things are not looking good for the PDP. Especially when, even after you said that it is in your constitution that power should be rotated, 
it didn't look like PDP was ready to respect that again, and the power went to the north. Yeah, we know that the last person that ruled was from the south in the PDP. But even if this were to be a, a verbal agreement, I know countries that have been ruled for years with a verbal constitution, an unwritten constitution, so that's not an excuse. So how are things looking generally for the PDP? From this other side, a lot of people are seeing it like, it's looking really bad for the PDP. What gives you confidence that you can even stroll into 2023 and make a mark at all, let alone winning as a party? Yes, you know, um, I, you, you see, I wouldn't see the, uh, the, the current conflict as all of the problems that the PDP has. No, conflict is a part of, of this business. My own concern is just time. But I, but I, the, the, I, I recognize the fact that, you know, conflicts are never really, you know, palatable. Like you want to look at it as very, look at being part in auspicious for the party. It, it could be, you see, but I am resting on the antecedent of political conflicts over over time in history. And I so saw when you imagine that it's going to maroon the, the, the party, a resolution comes. So I'm very that certain that this matter will be resolved. And on my own border is just time. There is a, the party is well positioned, you know, to wrest power from the, the all, all people's Congress. Of course, you don't expect that anyone is right senses will be propagate, propagating the APs. You know, if you look at the job, you know, the, our exchange rate alone is enough to invalidate the party. The party on but, but the threat, the on, threat, upon itself, you know, upon its own motion. The threat may not. The threat may not necessarily come from the APC. I mean, over the years we've had just like okay, two parties contending for the position of whatever it is. Now there seem to be a third and fourth a force as it is, because whether we like it or not, it's not only the APC and PDP that are talking right now. There are other people who are really promising, and Nigerians seem to be tired with the status quo, with the, the establishment, with the people who have always been there. So while PDP is fighting with the APC, there are others that are springing up, equally making waves. So you cannot really say that you want to wrest power from the APC. What about the other parties that are also trying to make sure that both the PDP and the APC do not even find anything in 2023? They are also there. You cannot just well, write them off. No, you see, that, that is the incumbent party. Okay, now, if you have 50 parties, you know, trying to wrest power from the incumbent party, there is still just one incumbent party. And that is that is putting the rug under your own, you know, position. You don't have to... The, uh, I mean, these are most women political, but a lot of these parties are, there are so many of these names. They, they are not incumbent. We are looking at the, 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 the government in power. We are talking about the government. You can't rest power from a, a, a party that is not, is not holding it. Do you understand? Okay, so they are not in view at all. They are not in view at all. And then when you talk about some of these other political, uh, some of these political, there are there could be a lot of these tendencies. Well, you see, the point is that the, the, the PDP is so capacious, is so active to be able to, you know, deal with uh, some of these issues, you know, as they come. And when we talk about, uh, uh, you know, uh, mushrooming interests, you know, there are some small political parties in some of the regions. I don't want to mention their names. And then, of course, you know, I don't want to aggregate in around some, some populist tendencies. Okay. The point is that you can't be looking at them when you have an incumbent. The incumbent is there for the all progressive con Congress. And as far as we are concerned, that we ordinarily we even expect the party to disqualify itself. The fact alone of that, the, the parade of all which have taken this country regarding our exchange rate is that it is, is, is shaking. It's unbelievable. It's unprecedented. That, and all, it is possible, really, one will expect that it is possible that a political party like the APC will throw in the towel and say, we are not going to be part of it anymore. We are failed. You know, so woefully. So the point I'm making is, for PDP, we are not going to rest victory, you know, or kind of, to wangle, you know, defeat from the, to the jaws of, of, of victory. You know, because victory is just there to be unnet. There has been a new valid political party that has no basis whatever to contend at all. 
And so the party is at the best moment you know, to reclaim power. And in the circumstances, it will be ideal that these conflicts do not come on the way at all. It's a momentous period that we expect to coast to victory on account of the absolute incompetence of the party in power. And so I see nothing stopping it. And so it is shimmering. The, 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 the expectation, the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the horizon is looking so good in the circumstances, you know, that nothing can stop the party. You know, from plucking power away from the from from, 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 from the of, of the post Congress, you look at even the uh, the uh, some of the elements you know coming up, a, a political party that can't even uh, you know be part of conventional civil civil discussion. When conversations are going on regarding the how a political party is found missing, it tells you how unprepared this party is. The party. You know, cannot be part of what you are doing, for instance. The party cannot be part of an organized debate. You see a party that is hiding from its own self. So in the circumstances, dislodging that party looks, you know, the most auspicious at the moment. And uh, it is for this reason that I will expect that the, uh, the, I mean the, uh, the, um, uh, the People's Democratic Party should be able to put its, its house in order to take advantage of this extraordinary uh, you know, opportunity. I don't know because uh, sorry because the incumbent right now I don't I don't remember any time where he attended uh, a political debate mm -hmm. yet Nigerians voted for him maybe maybe because of other circumstances which could also play here and I'm not saying that you are resting power rest uh, you're trying to take power from the other political parties but you are just one of them trying to take power from mm -hmm. uh, the incumbent so the race is stiff and I don't know how you can write off the thing, the fact that people are seeing the PDP as being so incompetent of resolving internal issues that when they come into power in a country that is divided along so many lines, religious, uh, political, uh, ethnic, whatever lines, so many lines now, mm -hmm. and you're saying it's, they're going to coast to power. That's the same language that PDP used in uh, 2015, and power was taken away from them. That's the same kind of uh, way that we were hearing in 2019, as power still didn't come to the PDP. And now, internal conflict has taken five governors, just the way five governors were taken from the PDP uh, prior to 2015 and the lost election. And now they are taken... Five governors are taken from the PDP again, and <laughs> they, they don't even have the power of incumbency. So I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering how it's looking for the PDP. I hope that you are going I to think, put your house in nothing, nothing, nothing gloomy at all, nothing gloomy. It's all part of this business, like I told you. You see, yes. politics is not about two plus two, it's four. You understand? Oh, yes. And then when you talk about uh, gloating, it is also part of politics. There is no political party, you know, that does not take pride in its capacity in staying, in staying power. There is no political party that will tell you it's going to lose power upon, upon its own motion. So, you know, political, you know, uh, chest beating is, is part of it. It really decorates your capacity, you know, to imagine what actually, how you can actually deal with, you know, your, your opposition. So it's not really unusual. It wouldn't be that because PDP said they were going to stay in power for 60 years or 50 years, that was the reason the party lost power. Uh, no, the party lost power through some strategic miscalculation. As far as I am concerned, it had no reason to lose, at, to lose power at all. But in any case, it's all a learning process. And then uh, well, today, today, the party is in a better position with the fact of this post-mortem you know, to determine what happened yesterday in projecting how it is going to move ahead, you know, for tomorrow. It may, it may be looking really a little difficult, but like I said, it's all part of it. This is politics. And then, um, uh, 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 insofar as it is uh, it's about human beings, there invariably there will be solutions. And I dare say, I predict very emphatically, we are going to have a United House, United House to confront this election. There's no question about it. So okay. don't be bothered about it. Yeah, don't be bothered about that at all. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Charlie Abo, for you know sharing your views with us this morning on the run-up. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming up.
Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, this is <laughs> where this segment ends. Yeah, well. it, it was really heated. Uh, I, I really wish that, you know, political parties in this present dispensation, yes. I mean, whatever your political party is or whatever your flag is, I wish that politicians would understand that arrogance mm. would take them nowhere. Mm -hmm. At this point, I mean, if you've been following the trend of, you know, what has been playing out in the political space of Nigeria from two years ago, in fact, yeah, from two years ago, from, say, three years, 2020, in fact, from after the NSAS protests mm -hmm. down to this point, if you've been following the trend of things happening, you would know that as a politician, as a political party, you need to be on the side of the people. Mm -hmm. They need to love you genuinely. And you need to have what they are looking for to get that love. I wish PDP would climb down from that. And there. any other political party, by yes, the way. Yes, but for the, for, you know, for the reason of this conversation that we're having mm -hmm. today is about the G5 and the yeah. PDP. I really wish that the PDP as a whole would climb down from their high horse and have this conversation with the G5. Yeah, because they, you, they need to know that, um, like he said, it was political miscalculations that led them there. Mm -hmm. That could have come by because of overconfidence in themselves that, okay, we have all the structures, we have all the apparatus, arrogance. we have everything. And that translates to arrogance that, okay, maybe uh, for us that are not politicians, we, don't, mm -hmm. we see it as arrogance. But I am going to be the one to vote. They, it is the vote of the people who not necessarily call themselves politicians that makes whoever calls himself a politician to be relevant in any office that you I want mean, to I mean, and a house divided, divided among itself cannot stand. Uh, you have a very huge project, as big as the presidential mm -hmm. seat of a country, as big as Nigeria, mm -hmm. in front of you, and you all are trading words. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, you're trying to have a relationship. If you're having a relationship, just to say, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I know I was wrong. It's, it goes a long way. Rather than saying, <laughs> you know, because I have a lot of money, my wife will always be my wife. Yeah. You know, give even if I wrong her, I will just give her money. Well, that's, that's what your it wife is. money. important. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, this is where we take a, a quick break. The news will come up at noon. And after the news, we will return with another very interesting and packed topic. Do not go anywhere. The roundup will return in a bit. Stay with us.